Jason belongs in hell. I'm going to see he gets there. We're joined now by the man who brought Tommy Jarvis to life in Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives, Tom Matthews. Tom, how are you today? I am well, thank you. Good. You know, beyond Jason Voorhees, there's really only one character who's lived on in multiple chapters of the Friday the 13th saga, and that's Tommy Jarvis. Looking back, what does it mean to you to have been a part of the Camp Crystal Lake saga? Uh, well, it's, it's been quite a ride. It's a ride that, that still is going on. Um, and I'm the only one who resurrected Jason and brought him back down in an hour and a half, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> And um, still get a lot of fans coming out to the conventions and stuff, which is very uh, heartfelt and warming to hear all their stories about how it affected their lives and stuff. Yeah, were you a Friday fan before landing the Jarvis role for Jason Lewis? I, I, I had seen uh, part one, of course, like like everybody else, um, and then had lost, lost touch with it and was just getting into my acting. Mm -hmm. So wasn't really getting uh, out to the movies a lot at that time. But I did go see... Some of them after um, I had been hired to portray Tommy Jarvis in Friday the 13th Part 6. You know, your Jarvis differed greatly from John Shepard's in A New Beginning. You just said that you'd only really seen the original. How did you approach the character? You know, Was that all you, or were you given some direction on how to play the character for that movie? No, I pretty much just uh, you know, I read the script and just basically used myself. I didn't really pull anything else from the other actors, any kind of physical mannerisms or anything like that. It was pretty pretty, pretty close to the vest. It's probably the closest, uh, the biggest role I've done that I pretty much played myself. Mm. You know, the end scene on the lake seemed like it would have been a difficult undertaking, particularly once you guys went underwater. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that was actually a fun shoot. We did all the exteriors out at the, the location in uh, Cummington, Georgia, and then we did the underwater um, sequences in uh, the city of industry in a big pool. So there was, there were guys, it was my first time about uh, of being underwater, and uh, there was a couple of guys underwater with us with oxygen tanks, and we were just pounding our chests when we needed oxygen, and they came over, gave us some oxygen, we'd hold our breath, they'd roll the camera, we'd let the oxygen come out of our mouths, and we were choking. <laughs> <laughs> You never really see outtakes when it comes to the horror genre, but there have to be stories from the set of Jason Liz. Can you share a funny story from the making of Part 6? Uh, funny? Oh, yeah. When, when <laughs> One thing that happened, we, we had changed from a daily schedule to a night schedule. Mm -hmm. It was in the, uh, the sheriff's uh, office, and they had uh, just gotten me back there and locked me up. Um, and... We were shooting, and there was a close-up on me, and all of a sudden, you just hear this guy snoring. <laughs> he had fallen asleep, one of the grips. He had fallen asleep, and he was just like, he was sawing wood, and I tried to keep it together as long as I could, but I had to, <laughs> I had to break and laugh. It was, it was pretty, pretty comical. <laughs> After Jason lives, the Tommy Jarvis storyline just simply vanished. Was there ever any discussion about you coming back for another turn, or were you at all disappointed that with Jason's continued rampage and the other movies in the series that they just left that story unfulfilled? Yeah, I think it was a very strong story point. I mean, he and I were, you know, it. We were going at each other. I think they should have continued that. There was some talk about a TV show um, about Tommy Jarvis uh, investigating, had turned into a detective and was investigating murders, and some of them are very similar to uh, killings, like, like Jason mm. went on a killing spree. So it was almost like uh, uh, Tommy Jarvis was hunting down Jason because he knew that he was the one who was killing everybody. But other than that, I hadn't really heard, heard of anything. Hmm. Now, I've asked this of Kane Hodder and Sid Haig, so I have to ask you, be it at a convention, in a letter, or some random encounter, what's the strangest request you've ever received from a fan? Well, I'll tell you. I, uh, some guy had me sign his arm, my <laughs> signature. And then there was a, like, a lull in the action from fans coming up and for me signing autographs. So I went walking around the convention, and I just happened to see this guy getting his name, my name tattooed on his, on his shoulder. <laughs> 
I wasn't the only one, though. He had a multitude of... Uh, I think I was above Gene Simmons. <laughs> so Nice. That was kind of the weirdest thing. You know, it's always, it's always uh, fascinating to see all the tattoos that people have done from uh, Friday the 13th and Return of the Living Dead. It just uh, kind of blows my mind a little bit. <laughs> How dedicated they are. Yeah. You know, you mentioned conventions earlier. When it comes to conventions, what sense do you get from Friday fans that keeps them coming back for more? You know, I just, like I said, I think it's just how it, is, it affected their life. You know, it was just a milestone in their life when they saw it. So a lot of people, um, that was the first Friday they had seen, depending on their age. And some of them were very, very young. So I, I blame that on bad parenting because I would never let my kids see that movie at a very young age. Right. Um, so just, you know, just the heartfelt, the really sincere and how it affected their lives. And some of the guys are makeup artists and some of the guys are really into horror films. And they just, uh, it, it's uh, somehow it touched uh, a place in their heart. And they're just, you know, they're just very happy to meet everybody from the cast whenever they come out. And uh, so it, it holds a special memory for them. Now, of course, you were also in Return of the Living Dead, like you just said, a story crafted by Russell Striner, Rudy Ricci, and John A. Russo, a trio involved with George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Did you feel any pressure heading into that project because of their ties to the Jason Voorhees of zombie flicks, or did that just make it more exciting for you? Uh, I didn't feel any pressure. That was actually the first big part I ever had, so I was just happy to get a job. <laughs> and... Uh... Uh, no, I didn't feel any pressure. I just uh, the script was so well written, and the characters and my arc as a, my my character's arc was so fantastic. Going from uh, just a nice punk kid looking trying to get a job, got a job, and then what ensues later, and I turn into this full blown zombie trying to get my girlfriend's brain. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> Your last film credit on IMDb was A Letter to Dad in 2009. And that was certainly the opposite end of the spectrum from Friday in Return. Having been in horror flicks like that, how did you come to be cast in a film with a Kristen message? Um, I just auditioned. The guys, I went in and, and uh, auditioned. I liked the script. Um, funny story, though. We, we shot that, like, I guess now it's been like 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then 15 years after, that we had a reshoot. Mm -hmm. If you notice at the end of the movie, there's a little montage at the end where everyone's 15 years older and how right. I was able to, you know, deal with my demons of having an alcoholic father and, and, and deal with our relationship with them and how I actually ended up having my own son and marrying the girl in the movie. Um, uh, so I don't know of very many movies where you have a reshoot 15 years later, and then the movie's released. That wasn't done intentionally. I know the guy, the guy who produced the movie, um, committed suicide, and then I think that's what happened. They ran out of money, committed suicide, and, and then it diverted back to the uh, director, who then proceeded to do the reshoot and release the movie after that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I know you're good friends with George Clooney, so I have to ask if you made your way to Italy for the big wedding. Unbelievable. It's the second best wedding I've ever been to. <laughs> what was the my, first? My, Just your own? My, my recent <laughs> one being the, being the first best. Yes, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was spectacular. It was just uh, picture perfect. And we all had a lot, lot of fun. And it was uh, about 110 people. And it's first class. It was just a really, a really good time to see everybody and all our friends. And meeting uh, Amal's family, who are just wonderful people, and I'm really happy for it, for the both of them. Yeah, I have to ask you, as someone who's on the inside looking out, do you find our culture's fascination with celebrity weddings a bit absurd? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just uh, it's a bizarre phenomenon, you know. It's just, uh, it's entertainment, and... and uh, you know, you just uh, have to take it with a grain of salt. So what keeps you busy these days? You got any projects on the horizon? Well, I'm supposed to do, uh, I'm scheduled to do something in February. It's a horror movie. Um, Sins of My Father. Uh, I play a detective, and he was a detective, and 
there's some hidden mystery and people are dying, so we're kind of talking about doing that in, in, in February. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Oh, nice. And then, of course, I just, uh, I'm a contractor, so that keeps me busy. That's what I get up in the morning to do and taking care of my three kids. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Tom Matthews, thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Call me anytime. All right, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Jason will return to the area that's familiar. No matter what you call it, it's still Camp Crystal Lake to him.